Hello again, we hope you're doing great. In our previous tutorial, we introduced the ping as a network diagnostic software. In this video, we're going to use the ping on our home lab's class AP. As per our network diagram, we will first send ping packets to our upstream neighboring device that is the main internet switch, as well as an address and a domain to check our internet connection on the class AP. These three addresses will be the destination addresses in our upstream network. And next, we will ping two destination addresses in our downstream neighboring device, which is the trainee router. On the class AP, we have two out interfaces. The upstream out interface is either 1, and the downstream out interface is WLAN 1. Anytime we send a ping packet, the packets using ICMP will exit either of the two out interfaces. We'll be checking the connectivity of both out interfaces for their respective networks. Moreover, if you recall, we had set two source addresses on our class AP, namely 172.31.252.100 and 10.00.254. For each of the destination addresses mentioned in both upstream and downstream networks, we'll be setting these two source addresses to check their connectivity across the network. To begin with, first let's open our addresses on the class AP. As mentioned just now, these two addresses are our source addresses and these two interfaces are the out interfaces on the class AP. So without further ado, let's start pinging. We'll first put in the IP address of the main internet switch that is 172.31.252.254 and as you can see, the ping is successful. And to check our out interface, if we choose the Ether1 out interface from which the class AP is connected to the main switch, we'll see that the ping is again successful. As a reminder, if you open the routes window, you can see that this address with the subnet mask of slash 24 is reachable on our Ether1 out interface, and we are receiving successful pings as expected. Now is the time to check the connectivity of our class AP with the broader internet domain. For this purpose, we will first ping the address 8888, which brings back successful results. We will also check our ping through the Ether1 out interface, which is also working fine. Next, if you remember from previous sessions, we set up dynamic servers via the DHCP client for our class AP. What does a DNS service do primarily? The main function of DNS or domain name system is to translate memorized domain names to numerical IP addresses and vice versa. Therefore, if we go back to our access point and ping yahoo.com, we will receive the IP address translation of this domain and a successful ping. And just like previous attempts, we will ping yahoo.com from our Ether1 out interface just to make sure everything is working fine. Okay, so far we have made sure that our class access point is correctly connected to the main switch and has internet connectivity. The class AP is able to successfully ping all three upstream destination addresses via its Ether1 out interface. As we mentioned in our last tutorial, each ping packet has a source address and a destination address and uses the ICMP protocol to move from an out interface of a device to the in interface of a destination device. Now, we want to use our source IP addresses to ping the previous destination addresses. To do so, we'll refer to the advanced tab and input the source address 172.31.252.100 as our first source address. In addition to the addresses menu, you can see that this source address is also listed as the preferred source address of the 172.31.252.0/24 network. As we ping our three upstream destination addresses using the 172.31.252.100 source address, you can see that all three upstream destination addresses are echoing back successfully. As for our other source address, that is 10.00.254, it is listed as the preferred source address of the 10.00.24 network. Once we input this address as the source address of our ping packets, 
we will see that the class AP fails to ping all three upstream destination addresses and we receive timeouts for these three ping attempts. At this stage, the results of upstream pinging from the class AP look like this. The source address of 172.31.252.100 successfully pinged all three destination addresses, whereas the source address of 10.00.254 could not ping any of our upstream destination addresses. Now, for stage 2 of our ping tutorial, let's go back to the class AP and start pinging our downstream neighbor, which is the trainee router. We'll start with the IP address of the trainee router that is 10001. The ping here comes back successfully and it delivers the same successful ping result when we choose the WLAN 1 to class as the out interface. However, when we try to ping the address 192.168.1.254, which was previously set on the trainee router, the ping fails. The same ping failure also happens when we choose the WLAN 1 out interface to ping this destination address. Next, just as we did for our upstream network, we will go to the advanced tab to set up our source address for pinging the same downstream destination addresses. First up is 172.31.252.100. This source address successfully pings the destination of 10.0.0.1 on the trainee router, but again comes up short when we try to ping the address 192.168.1.254. As for our second source address on the class AP, that is 10.0.0.254, the ping is successful for the destination of 10.0.0.1, but similar to previous attempts, this address cannot ping the destination of 192. 168.1.254. So, the results of our downstream pinging look like this. The WLAN 1 out interface of the class AP, as well as its two source addresses, were able to ping the destination of 10.0.0.1, but none of them could reach the destination address of 192.168.1.254. Based on these results, we have two questions for you. Why is the class AP unable to ping its upstream network from the source address of 10.0.0.254? And what is the reason behind its inability to ping the destination of 192.168.1.254? See if you can come up with a solution. That's it for this session. Stay tuned and see if you can solve the connectivity issues we faced in this tutorial. Thank you for bearing with us. Stay safe and take care.